So again, the architect can sort of say, well, this logic belongs in the database or it belongs in the app server and have the ability to be able to switch if need be. And, um, and I think that's a, a big win um, for developers. Okay, can you sort of give us some examples in how this relates into real life? Well, sure. Um, obviously, in the, in the real life situation, you're, when you're looking at publishing, the quicker uh, you can publish uh, as a developer uh, information, the quicker you can get your uh, application to market, which means your customers are going to have um, But in the case of consumption, actually, is a very interesting animal whereby you can um, consume services, perhaps maybe it's in the case of uh, an overstock item in your database, which you can certainly evaluate that immediately within the database and be able to, say, consume a web service that posts information on eBay, which allows you to then sell on eBay, which then again leverages um, the, the whole Web 2.0 paradigm where you use leverage the long tail of the internet to sell products that you couldn't normally sell. And, um, and you can do all this uh, with a low-cost offering with DB2 Express C, which is, is awesome. Okay. Uh, how about an example of uh, publishing data? What might you use that for, you know, publishing DB2 data as a web service? Well, um, there's all kinds of data people store in their databases, and usually there's pieces of data that they need to have uh, accessible um, very uh, much in a timely fashion. Usually there's some part of their business that's mission critical. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that uh, colleagues uh, that I have been with have actually taken data and published it as uh, atom feeds. So it's really interesting what they've done because a lot of the times you're actually working with XML on the, um, on the inbound data and they're able to just simply repurpose the XML into atom feeds which saves a huge amount of processing. And with the end user benefit, of course, is being able to get that active data in their feed reader without having to install any other uh, uh, software at all because they've already had the feed reader for other purposes, which um, uh, is very attractive to the end user, of course. Okay. And you said you can you know, do all of this, that is, publishes, publish DB2 data as a web service uh, by just, you know, a few clicks and... Uh, drags for mouse, is that it? Yep, so you uh, are do you, able to... Do you have a demo that you could show show to us? Certainly I do. Uh, we can take a look at that. Uh, okay, let right me now. bring over my camera to your laptop and uh, let's zoom in to uh, take a look. So uh, this is the the uh, Web 2.0 uh, start toolkit for DB2. And uh, as uh, Folks probably already know that uh, Web 2.0 includes web services, atom feeds, and it allows you to point and click through your data and publish uh, that information uh, via a web service or atom feed. So if I selected this first option, um, we would be able to point and click through XML documents and repurpose them into atom feeds. But I'm just going to show you the, the web service control panel here, and I'll just simply log in. Of course, I'm typing very secret information. IBM Confidential, of course. And so right now we have no uh, services to show, but we will expose a table. Now I'm going to use my Chris use, uh, a schema and select the purchase order uh, table. Um, <clears throat> so we want to be able to publish web services that uh, allow you to uh, get product information, um, which is probably pretty standard stuff. So we're going to give it a name, my first web service and give it a description very verbose kind of thing so uh, this you know, welcome to web 2.0 and we could do several operations with this uh, start toolkit add query change and remove so we'll just query um, to get the information and we'll continue so we can select all the columns or some of the columns and and uh, use parameters so we can have parameterized queries. So I'll just select the uh, uh, purchase order ID and submit that. And we can then test the service. And so you'll notice that uh, our website just shows you the REST parameters that you'd expect. This is a REST web service, by the way. 
and uh, we'll click on test service and voila you have a, a service that could be used in a mashup or uh, an NAJAX request. Uh, there's a variety of different things you could use um, uh, this web service for in the Web 2.0 space. So um, if I just went back um, you'll find that I can continue back and get information about my web service. If I click on here, it gives me information about that. Welcome to Web 2.0 and I can proceed to test it again or view sample data. So, um, uh, you know, this will produce a, uh, an AJAX request for uh, the data. Anyway, um, that concludes the demo and uh, hopefully uh, people will be uh, intrigued about it and, and proceed to download the uh, Web Tool start, Starter Toolkit for uh, DB2. Um, what are you working on these days that might help uh, our viewers? Well, um, and, uh, there's no rest for the wicked, so um, I'm off working on a presentation right now. Um, I'm, we're doing a joint presentation with uh, Stephen Brodsky, one of our architects, and we're going to be talking about actual Web 2.0 and SOA. Um, it's a webcast that's coming up on July 25th. Uh, unleashing Web 2.0 with DB2. So you're going to see some of the stuff that I couldn't talk about on this uh, little section, but uh, it, it, we're excited to, to show it off during the webcast on the 25th. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you very much for uh, coming here, Chris, and talking to us. Okay, thank you, Graf.